Museum of the Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers. Would you all please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Scott? Here. Wilson? Here. Davidson? Here. Fleming? Here. And Campbell? Here. Uh, tonight we have uh, four mayor's awards. We're going, uh, we have the two that are listed, and I also have two that we didn't get a chance to uh, uh, to give the awards to them. Uh, they've been presented a while, a while before. And I'm going to double down on both of these. Uh, I'm going to do them together uh, because I think they kind of, they pretty much do. Uh, so we'll start off with... Uh, with the sweetheart of a gal and uh, her cohort, uh, Gina and Tom. Uh, be it known on behalf of the city of Burlington, Iowa, I would like to thank you for being model Burlingtonians. Your commitment to your job, the safety of your community, and the fact that you got 80 people to FEMA training in Maryland without incident is a miracle. You make Burlington a great place to live, work, and play, excluding the mayor. Anyways, on July 18, but we're gonna give it to you tonight. This mayor's award is presented to Gina Harden and Tom Colbert. Would you two both please uh, come on down? We're going to ask you to uh, have a word, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll just say thank you for um, everyone just taking time out of their busiest schedules to attend. I mean, it was a monumental effort, and it, yeah, I was the one that kind of organized it and got everybody there and got everybody back safely, thank goodness. But it, without your support, and you and the council to allow your department employees and um, Jim, you and Shane, taking the time out of your busy schedules to go, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, I think it was a great learning experience for us. We learned a lot. There's a lot of networking done while we were out there. Um, we've got a lot of after action items to work on to improve. Um, I think we're better prepared than a lot of cities and counties in the state and even the nation. But this course just helped us improve that tremendously. So again, thank you for your efforts and appreciate everything you do. Continue. She stole all my thunder. No. <laughs> Actually, what I'd like to talk to you about is, is your commitment to safety beyond the course. And we've had that with our Skywarn people working hand in hand with the city, our CERT volunteers also uh, doing a marvelous job to, to help be a, uh, a force multiplier for you guys to ease on your budgets for, for those kinds of things. And. Uh, Working with the responders in this community is, is really great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I have these next two. I'm going to do them uh, together as well, um, except for with a little less, uh, less emotion from the last time <laughs> watching you. But uh, I'm, I'm excited to give these two to uh, two, uh, two Burlington people that their generosity and love for the community. Um, uh, they, they put their, their money where their mouths were. And, and I just think it's just uh, phenomenal, especially you guys given to what you gave uh, to the swimming pool. And you guys don't even have kids. I mean, that, that, uh, uh, I just think that's outstanding. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, it is my honor to, to give these awards tonight. Be it known on behalf of the city of Burlington, Iowa, I would like to thank you both for being model Burlingtonians. Your commitment to this community, personally and in business, is honorable and my admiration cannot be expressed in words. Your contribution helps make Burlington a great place to live, work, and play for everyone. On August 15, 2016, this mayor's award is presented to Mike Crowner and Ann March. Would you two come on down? Yeah. 
once a month, whether I need it or not. Would you guys have a word, please? Um, I'm not a very good speaker, but thank you so very much for this. This means a lot. Um, I've been fortunate enough to travel all over the United States working, and um, I'm very proud to be part of Burlington and own a business in Burlington, and I'm proud to live here and work and play. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> She's such a trooper. She didn't even move the microphone down. She just stood on her tippy toes. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, I, uh, I, got a, I got a good alias out of this donation. I'm Mark or Mike or whatever you guys would like <laughs> right. to call me. <laughs> I've got uh, cards sent to me, and thank you, Mark Crowner. So, anyway, uh, I appreciate this award's great. That's not uh, why we did it, to get recognition. It's just uh, we don't have kids. Um, our, our income comes from the community, and uh, one, way to, one way to give back is to give back to the community, and hopefully positive things can come out of this. Thank you very much, guys. Hey, make sure you thank your brother Mark too, would you? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, at this time we're going to have a presentation of check for boots and badges by Mr. Kale Heitmeyer. Chief. Yeah, good evening. <clears throat> thanks for having us. Thanks for taking a minute to do this. But what we would like to do is is give Kale a certificate of appreciation that is awarded to him, Kale Heitmeyer, for your commitment and dedication in organizing and promoting the 2016 Boots versus Badges. The event in support of the Burlington Police Department, the community of Burlington, and the canine program. His tireless efforts and generous spirit are recognized and appreciated. So not only on behalf of the police department, but on behalf of this council and the whole city of Burlington, we really want to thank you and give you a certificate of appreciation for everything you did. So I'm Kale. Hi. Uh, this is Jesse. Jesse's also helped me out with a lot that goes into coordinating things too. Uh, and uh, we wanted to come down. We got a big check. So uh, with that, we wanted to present twelve thousand three hundred dollars raised from our event, thanks to the community and everybody that came out to help support the cause, and everybody that helped also do donations. Also, Bark and Play helped to do it. Helped. It, excuse me helped with a donation so with everybody's donations this helps put them a little bit closer to that goal of theirs and to help making the community a little bit more safer amen Very good. Good. Can, I, yeah, can we get a picture of you yeah, big okay. check and the council members please all of us come on yeah all of us come on that's awesome Caleb. maybe that's why we all dress the same that's right that's right One last thing too, just give a shout out to everybody at the Burlington Police Department for helping out for all the last second things I needed along the way too. They're, they're champs, so thank you guys. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. excellent. Thank you. Did you get through the event without anybody going to the emergency room? Did. That did? A oh, good deal. Hey, nobody pulled the hammy. Hey, Mike, Mark, and Ann, if you guys want to dip on that or you can go ahead and go right now before we get to the other stuff. No, we're good. All right. Then. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda tonight is the consent agenda. All matters listed under item one consent agenda having been discussed are considered to be routine by the city council and it will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If a discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Uh, on the consent agenda, we have
finances and miscellaneous, minutes of previous meetings, payroll, and city claims, beer, liquor, wine, and cigarettes, reports, and bonds. We have three resolutions. First resolution of City of Burlington uh, relating to property tax exemption granted under Iowa Code 15.332 for Sogan Container Manufacturing Corporation and authorizing the mayor to sign a development agreement. The second is a resolution approving an agreement between Beanster and Kemp, Inc. and the City of Burlington for engineering services in connection with the reconstruction of the storm sewer outlet at the bluff of the Burlington, or I'm sorry, of the Mississippi River uh, on Harrison. The third is a resolution approving an, uh, the release and vacation of easements located within the Burlington Crossing subdivision. And we also have three uh, hearings set for September 6th. Uh, the first is a consideration of an ordinance rezoning the property located at 2910 Madison Avenue from R1 single family residential to C1 limited commercial zoning district. Second is a consideration of a permanent encroachment agreement with Tracy Thompson for encroachment into city right-of-way at 129 Polk Street, Burlington, Iowa. And the third is a consideration of sale of property locally known as 118 North Main Street, City of Burlington, Des Moines County, Iowa, with conditions. <coughs> uh, is there anybody from the audience that would like to have any of these items removed? I see none. Council? No. Thanks. Okay. <coughs> oh, sir. Okay. Your Honor, I motion to approve all Listed under item one, consent agenda. Second. Moved and second. Let's take it to vote. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Campbell? Aye. All right, well done. Uh, first tonight is a hearing. Uh, this is a consideration of plans and specifications for the 2016 West Avenue and West Burlington Avenue roundabout, RISE RM 0977, 643 7D 29. As the engineers come forward to <coughs> go through the, the plans and specs, uh, Eric, are you putting a, a schematic up? Yeah. But we won't have a formal presentation. Uh, we did do a formal presentation on the roundabout uh, six months ago or so. I think uh, it was December or January or something. And like the that. design work that we're seeing here is straight out of what that presentation mm -hmm. was yep. based off of the, the data that was given to the council at that time. So I'm Matt Walker. I'm with uh, French Renneker Associates. Uh, we team together with SEH out of Mason City to complete the design of your roundabout. Uh, what we have is to fully reconstruct the intersection of West Burlington Avenue and West Avenue. And we, will go, we are going to construct a roundabout with a similar format as you see up here. The plans call for a bid opening on August 31st at 2 o'clock. Uh, We've got a late start date or an early start date, hopefully of September 19th, with a late start date of April 15 of next year. And the thought behind that mm -hmm. was we didn't want to force a contractor to begin construction this fall, knowing that it could carry on and could get quite expensive to do that. It is a working day calendar contract. It's got 75 uh, working days. Uh, the intersection will be fully closed during construction and the detour route Eric, you want to just that up there? Would be uh, Division Street to Roosevelt and then Division Street to Gear Avenue to get the traffic around for the, uh, for the detour. Let's see, the estimate right now is $1.35 million. And I guess with the RISE grant funding, it will be utilized for the project. There currently is still a snag. We're still waiting on one easement from the dre former Dresser Rand property property so I don't think we'll be able to have that bid opening if that easement doesn't come in within the next week or two oh, come on, goodness. I guess with that any questions there has been some could we go back to that roundabout picture there's been some question about the ability of semis to navigate that can you, same question, can you yes. speak to that yes uh, all of the designs that go through this fully uh, utilize truck turning movements uh, the colored concrete, the pinkish color in the center is what you call the truck lane. And what that is is a 12-foot lane for the semi as they're maneuvering through that, their back wheels will just uh, jump that curve if necessary just to make the turnaround. So all vehicle sizes have been ran through with computer software to show that all different angles that a truck could possibly make would be able to make the turn. One caveat to that statement, uh, that's all normal sized uh, 
trucks, the largest regular semi. Um, about once a quarter to once every six months, Dresser and uh, Siemens now does have an exceptionally long truck uh, that comes out of there. That is intended, they will utilize some traffic control and flaggers to route that truck through what would be the slip lane uh, for traffic that would normally be going westbound turning north. Uh, it'll actually be going through that lane backwards with traffic control. But no, no problems with uh, tearing up any, any, uh, any of that work that's going to be done with that? Uh, it's being designed with <coughs> the largest regular semi in mind. Um, generally in industrial parks, that's what you would see. That inside paving, paving there, that red will be just as thick as the normal street. Um, and it's meant to carry that load. Where are, we at? Where are we on the land acquisition required to do this? Okay, you have the land acquisition has been approved with the chamber or the partnership as well as what's the triple T? Uh, triple S leasing. Triple uh, S leasing. The property owners on the northeast and, or sorry, northwest and southwest corners uh, have already signed purchase agreements. Um, the northeast corner, which was Dresser and owned by Siemens now, is the only holdup, and it S Siemens has approved it. They they have not signed off on it. Okay. I know they have a they have a couple of steps internally that they're trying to work through um, yeah. as part of this, and some of those could be to our favor, uh, actually. Uh, but uh, we're still waiting to see if we can get some pressure for them to get through it. And part of it, I mean, really the hang up is just so the change of ownership and you're having two different companies trying to deal with with a piece of land that was not part of Siemens pr previously. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone from the audience that has any questions or concerns? Hello. I'm just looking at this picture right here. I mean I don't really, I've been through some roundabouts. I'm not, a, I'm not a huge roundabout person. But people, we live in Iowa and we plow snow. Is the medians necessary? Lines have been working for years. That's a lot of extra expense. And the medians, is that, I'm assuming is the orange is the medians? Dividing traffic? Like on all four sides? I mean, if the medians aren't there, it's going to make navigation easier for everybody. And you got to realize, guys, we get snow three months out of the year. Operators have enough problems, let alone a median that might be hitting a 12-inch snow. That's just my concern, and plus it could be a great savings that was brought, that's on cutting them out. That's a good concern that was brought up. Concrete's about 115 bucks a yard, so. Brian, do you want to? Okay. The median's there. Well, number one, the way the lanes are laid out, they are normal traffic lanes or a little bit wider already. Um, if the medians were to be painted, number one, that would be more um, concrete that would have to be paved. Uh, if you do it as grassy medians, then you end up with the potential that you've got snow plows and traffic running through grass. Uh, the medians themselves are actually meant to be a safety feature. Um, it forces traffic in particular directions, uh, and it forces vehicles at particular angles to decrease the severity of any crashes that do occur. If we didn't have medians, we could just leave this intersection signalized. Only upsize uh, the geometry, increase the length of the mast arms of the um, traffic signals. It's, there's a number of ways that you can design uh, an intersection. Uh, the roundabout is one of, if not the safest, um, once people get used to it. The severity of crashes that occur are is vastly decreased. The number of conflict points where crashes can occur is about 25% of what's at a normal intersection. Um, and then just the traffic flow, the amount of traffic that it can handle is vastly increased as opposed to stopping traffic with either stop signs or signals. And didn't we, we also address, and I don't know what it is verbatim, maybe you can address that, but about uh, the snow removal and that sort of thing with uh, looking at other communities that have this that are yeah, I mean, I, Coralville, Iowa City have a number of um, roundabouts, and they are in the same climate. We have the same uh, situation here. Snow removal 
it's not going to be the least complex thing, and I know where the gentleman's coming from as far as snow plows hitting curbs and things like that. Um, it's something that's never going to go away if you've got a curved uh, street. It just happens. Um, as far as maintenance goes, it'll be different than a normal intersection, yes. Is our city crews able to maintain it? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns from the audience? And thank you for bringing that up. Good points, Mr. Brown. Council? I have none. I think it's a good move. Okay. Motion to close. Second. Kathleen. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Campbell? <clears throat> Here I have a resolution approving plans and specifications for the 2016 West Avenue and West Burlington <laughs> Avenue roundabout. Rise RM-0977-643-7D-2016 Second. 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 Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Okay. Uh, next, we have consideration of an ordinance amending various sections of Chapter 155, Internal, or, I'm sorry, International Building Code of the City of Burlington Municipal Code. This is a, a code change primarily uh, spurned on by the adoption by the state of the 2015 International Building Code. In May of this year, they uh, updated their uh, state codes and went to the 2015. Uh, international building code and international existing building code they were under the 2009 uh, version of that uh, so the primary change within uh, our city code chapter 155 is going to uh, the 2015 edition of the international building code from the 2012 uh, there are a couple of minor uh, wording changes under uh, section 155.02 um, and then the uh, one primary uh, amendment to the code is under uh, section 155.03 sections amended uh, this uh, reads uh, in section 1030.1 emergency escape and rescue as amended by adding the follow uh, the additional exceptions and other than group R three occupancies buildings equipped throughout with an approved automatic sprinkler system uh, in accordance with section 903.3.11 uh, in item B and other than group R three occupancies sleeping rooms provided with a door to a fire rate resistance rated corridor having access to two remote exits in oppos opposite directions uh, this applies to uh, floors two and three of buildings um, that are uh, do have a, a fully sprinkled building or do have uh, two fire rated corridors uh, for bedrooms um, that don't have window access uh, under the building code uh, that was changed from 2009 to 2012 and 2015 uh, all bedrooms had to have uh, window access on floors two through three, floors four and five did not, floors four and above. Um, so if you're on floor two or floor three, by the 2015 code, you'd have to have a, a window access. Uh, in 2009, that was not in there. But on floor four, you did not have to have that access, just the one floor difference. Uh, and that changed uh, in the code from 2009 to 2012 and, and continued in 2015 without any real explanation by the state. Um, the state went from 2009 code to 2012 to 2015. We're going from 2012 to 2015. Um, looking at, uh, there have been some other communities that have made this change as well, um, and it's something we've discussed internally. Our building inspectors have reviewed it, uh, talked with the fire marshal, and felt uh, that this was an appropriate change to um, make it a little more consistent uh, for fully sprinkled buildings, especially that they. Um, for floors two and above that they could have the same requirement for uh, bedroom access uh, the following section chapter 155.04 uh, just has some minor wording changes taking out uh, chapter 34 that's no longer listed in the code just uh, stating it as existing structures and this section uh, we'll see in the following code was added to that code as well just as a clarification depending on what code you're looking at so but the primary change again is going from 2012 to 2015 codes and then uh, allowing the exceptions uh, which allows fully sprinkled buildings on floors two and three to f follow the same requirements that floors four and above have so does this have any an impact on any projects underway 
This wood on the, the Tama project downtown, um, just from configuration, there, I think there was four units, uh, four units out of the 48 total uh, on the second floor, third floor that this could apply to. Um, not all the units on the second and third floor uh, don't have window access for bedrooms, but there were, I think, four units on the second and third floor uh, that didn't. Uh, so this could apply to them if this were approved, and as well as any other building downtown. Thank you, sir. Anyone from the audience? Questions or concerns? See not Council? So that this works okay for you then? Your Honor, I move to close the public hearing. Second. Second. Move second. Kathleen? Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Your Honor, I move to preliminary adoption of the first reading of an ordinance amending various sections of Chapter 155, International Building Code of the City of Burlington Municipal Code. Second. Move to second. Let's get a vote on it. Kathleen? Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Okay, moving forward, we have a consideration of an ordinance amending various sections of Chapter 156, International Existing Building Code of the City of Burlington Municipal Code. This is again is going from the 2012 to the 2015 edition, uh, this time of the International Existing Building Code. Uh, again, a couple minor uh, changes, uh, wording changes in uh, Section 156, uh, and then adding in, the, as I mentioned, under the previous code, um, Section 156.03, uh, number six. Uh, this is really a clarification for small projects in downtown. Instead of, instead of having to go through the computation in the international existing building code of when a sprinkler is or isn't required for a, a small a building maximum of three stories in height, no more than four dwelling units. This clarifies uh, when a sprinkler is required or not required without having to go through that lengthy computation in the code. So uh, it's something that um, our building inspectors found just in the past of uh, people were spending a lot of time, and that's a big question before they even start a project on some of these smaller buildings. Uh, do I or don't I have to have sprinklers? And this clarifies it, makes it easier instead of sending them to the code and having them do a lengthy computation. This just uh, makes it easy and states if the building's maximum three stories in height, um, maintained in accordance with the IBC, and doesn't contain more than four dwelling units. Etc. It does not have to have a sprinkler, so that's just a clarification that's in our building code as well, and makes it easier for people to know going into the project what the what the requirements are. Okay, good deal. Is there anybody from the audience that has any concerns? I see none. Lovely audience tonight, Council. Just good. Good. Good job. And move to close the public hearing. Second. Second. Scott. Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Your Honor, I move for preliminary adoption of the first reading of an ordinance amending various sections of Chapter 156, International Existing Building Code, the City of Burlington Municipal Code. Second. Moved in second. Let's vote on it. Kathleen. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Well done. Uh, now the resolutions. This first resolution we've already introduced and seconded. We're just going to discuss it and vote tonight. Uh, it is a resolution establishing no parking areas in the 500 block of Terrace Drive, continued from the August 1st, 2016 City Council meeting. Yes, sir. You got a new shirt, Nick? I did. Everybody's you, got a new shirt but me. You like it? Yeah, it's nice. Um, I guess I just wanted to say that the resolution has not changed at all. So if you'd like to amend any times, you can do that tonight. So, Thank you. Do you have anything you want to add before? I'll just mention this is a, a follow-up on a request from the, the school to have uh, the last section immediately adjacent to their uh, facility on Terrace Drive uh, closed during school hours. Uh, they're trying to just gain control over access uh, to the facility they want to make sure that uh, students that, that may leave campus during the day that they have some a little bit more level of control that's really the purpose of what they're trying to do uh, if they they want them to park in their school parking lot uh, where they have controlled egress uh, so that they can make sure that they know who's coming and going from the facility uh, it's a purely the the purpose behind what they're looking to do. You see in your packet a couple of letters from 
some of the residents in the area with opposition. Uh, you've had you have a couple of members in the audience as well who have some concerns about the, uh, this change uh, under consideration. And it's uh, up to you whether you, I know at the last meeting there was a little bit of discussion of potentially modifying or just not approving this. So I turn it over to your hands to how you want to proceed on that. Okay. Well, we have some people from the audience that uh, have any discussion or have any questions regarding this. Okay, not even Mark? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I you guys aren't ever going to invite <laughs> me back here again. <laughs> I. I, this doesn't affect my neighborhood, but I do, I do know that, that that's a, a good neighborhood and they pay, pay good property taxes. I personally feel that this is a school problem. They're just trying to push the students to use the parking lot. And at the same time, we're punishing the people that have fine houses around that place and they want to live close to the school. I really feel like it's a school problem and they're just trying to push the cars to the parking lot. I don't feel that it's a city problem. share the speaker's thoughts there. Are you going to get your chance, brother? Any other comments? We have Cameron's comment, please. He said he's, he doesn't support it. Good. <clears throat> Based on the, the, the rest of the neighborhood and the restrictions that's uh, been put on place in the rest of the neighborhood, I don't, I, I, I wouldn't have a problem uh, uh, adopting this if there was a stronger presence from the from the uh, school system they it seemed to me that they felt they could live with it either way is the impression that I got and uh, why upset the apple cart I guess when it's uh, when the uh, advantage is not that great for them I guess the way that I see it um, and I'm, I'm not a big <coughs> of providing on-street parking for anybody but that's just the way that it is and that's uh, uh, why I'm uh, not opposed to leaving it like it is. Could I offer an amendment, Your Honor? I'd, like, I'd move to amend the time from, it says 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the resolution. I would like to move to amend to say 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Just, I understand that that area gets really congested. Um, I've had to drive through there, you know, with the parking and then people still lining up to get their their children. But I'd have to just think about the people who live there and, you know, pay their taxes and do utilize those parking areas. Um, and it's hard to say really exactly what times they're going to be using those parking places. I mean... There are times, I'm sure, when it would happen between 9 and 3 that they would need to, need to park there. So I have a hard time accepting that. Well, let's take it to the voting system. Kathleen? Scott? Aye. Wilson? Oh. No. No, oh, I want to reverse my vote. I can't reverse it, but oh, Wilson? Davidson? No. Motion to reconsider. <laughs> Dave? Are you waiting for me? Davidson says no. Okay. Fleming? No. McCampbell? No. Doesn't make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> you got me all screwed up, Tim. <laughs> That's why I'm going first. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you for coming down. You still have your. All right. Let's move Your Honor, I have a resolution approving agreement with Carly Nelson and Company to provide construction management services for the Burlington Police Department renovation project. Second. Enclosed in your packet is a copy of the uh, construction management agency uh, contract uh, with Carly Nelson. We went through a process of requests for qualifications with that engineering firms. Uh, through that process, ultimately, uh, Carl A. Nelson came out on top. Um, the fees that you see are listed in here. It has three different components, a base fee of 15% or 
fifteen thousand uh, dollars, three percent construction fee, and then they have the general conditions. It's an estimated general conditions at this point, but their estimate is about twenty thousand a month. Uh, they're looking at about a nine-month time frame for construction services. Um, looking at how the fee schedule is set up, this is pretty comparable with what other contracts are for this type of service. Uh, the fees are in line with what would be expected uh, for uh, a firm performing <coughs> a construction management agency services. Uh, they'll be working in conjunction with Estes, James Estes, uh, as the architect. Uh, on this project, we're looking at about a nine-month design phase and a nine-month construction phase. Uh, overall fees, I think, worked out. I haven't looked at it in a while, but I think it's 300000 in that in that range, depending on how the timing goes, which in, in the project, uh, the actual construction costs are $3.5 million estimated. But we do recommend moving forward and doing this working with Carly Nelson on this. We're excited to see something happen. Amen. Yes. Is there anyone from the audience with questions or comments concerning the construction management agreement? Council? I think it's just important for everyone to, again, remember and realize that the cost of the construction management is basically taken out of what we would be paying on top of other contract. yeah general, and contractor. general contractors yeah. um, so it's not like it's an added cost it's actually it simplifies uh, a lot of things for us good point thanks for bringing that and in actuality it might save us money probably in all likelihood yeah. I shouldn't say might it will yeah. well they're, they're more apt to have our interest in mm -hmm. yeah. hearts yes. rather than the company's interest in hearts so it's a good move any, any questions or concerns from the audience? All right. Uh, Council, we're good? Yeah. All right. Let's get her done. Kathleen? Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. In front of a resolution awarding contract for the 2016 former Dresser Rand site cleanup project. Second. Mr. Tisson? Uh, we have Mike Golan with Impact 7G here to kind of go over the project. But again, yes, this is, is. How you doing tonight? Uh, doing well. How you doing? Clean up of the dresser and site. Well, Mike Golan with Impact 7G. I've been working with the city on this project for almost a couple of years now. Um, just went out to bid to, to get the cleanup we received. We had three people at the, the mandatory preview meeting, but we only received two bids at the end. Um, there was quite a difference in the two bids. Yeah. Um, however, the Lowest bid, which was 4% uh, below the uh, engineer's estimate of probable cost um, at $598,006, was uh, Jay Petticord. And uh, after our review, um, we've determined that it would be respon uh, reasonable, responsible, and the contract price is considered fair and reasonable. And it was below the engineer's estimate of probable cost. Um, so we, I recommend that the city would, uh, I recommended to the city that they accept the bid and move forward with getting this project cleaned up. So. Anybody from the audience have any concerns? <laughs> Loving the audience tonight. Council. Thank you for your help. One of the things to just point out, we've entered services with you to get through this phase at this point. We s we'll still have another contract, a lump sum fee for oversight. Well, I think the, the over the, just the oversight would be a time materials, I think, and then okay. a lump sum for the reporting that needs to go along with the okay. Department of Natural Resources. There's a another report uh, for the cleanup uh, portion of it, and then as well as moving the site to the no further action that the city has been seeking. So you'll have a separate contract that'll come to do the, the back end work with Impact 7G uh, at the, I think the next meeting will be, yeah. it'll be on the agenda. Uh, this project is designed to be done in? Within 90 days of the notice to proceed. Okay. Which I would assume would just start fairly quickly. When this project is completed, then what? Do we have land for sale? You'll have have a, a green space at this point. And yes, that land would be available. It could be used for commercial purposes, commercial industrial pur purposes. Yeah, commercial, industrial, um, no residential, right. um, but anything else. Um, 
but that's part of getting it certified uh, with the state is to make sure that it's in a condition that's if somebody were to be interested in purchasing it to to use they have something that they can hang their hat on that they're not taking on a yeah, the, the, the no further liability. action is from the state saying this has been cleaned up to, you know, following their rules and it kind of gives the uh, any buyer a um, recovery of assurance that uh, it's been addressed properly. It's going to be good for sunbathing then? Absolutely. You're good to go, Dean. You can leave. I got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, very good. Anything Thank else? you, Mike, for your help. Thank you. All right, well done. Um, let's take it to vote. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. <clears throat> Thank you. Your Honor, I have a resolution amending fees at Nightwood Park Pool. Second. 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 This is a, a resolution brought forward uh, setting a rate for a sponsored free day at Dankwood Park Pool. Um, the listed price in the resolution uh, subject to council approval is $800 with uh, some conditions uh, just uh, kind of laying out the, the conditions for having the free day, including advance notice, uh, a mutually agreed date. Um, free days open to any and all the public at any of age, free of charge, uh, maximum of seven free days allowed in the calendar swim season are available for reservation on a first come first serve basis. This isn't for done with any one group. Uh, South Hill has spearheaded this, but any group could come forward on a first come first reserve basis to uh, sponsor a free day. Uh, maximum of three days per month um, may be allowed in the months of June, July, and August. And uh, pool staff would reserve the right to limit the number of patrons within the pool area at one time based on capacity and lifeguards on duty. We don't anticipate that being an issue, but just wanted to clarify that um, within the conditions stated here. So, Thank you. Anybody from the audience has any questions or concerns? on a roll tonight. <laughs> Told you, you're not going to invite me back. <laughs> you're invited anytime. Um, I don't know what you guys are going to decide on this, but here's kind of the way I look at it. I'm a, I'm a businessman also. Um, when something's not working and something's not making money, which we all know, there's not a swimming hole in this southeast aisle that's making money. They just don't. It's something that the community provides or the city provides for the community. I understand we lose money in it, but you know, how much money on a Monday does that pool bring in? Does anybody have that answer? How much money what? On a Monday would that pool bring in for attendance? Does it bring $600 in? It, it depends on the day. I, we've gone well, from I understand that. What I, to $1,000. It just depends on. Where I was going with this is I understand on the weekends not doing this, but I can't believe a Monday or Tuesday since I've made this donation, I've been doing some driving around there, and I really don't believe that the pool probably makes $600 on a Monday or a Tuesday. And, you know, other things we could do, you know, it, it, let's promote this thing a little bit. I don't know if we have a manager, you know, we could be doing after hour birthday parties. Make it more, make it more affordable. Make it 300 for a birthday party for a couple hours, you know. There, there's things we can do with this pool besides just back away from it and say we're losing money. Let's close this thing down. That's a beautiful area, guys. It really is. And not to mention three quarters of our population is on the south side of town. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Anybody else from the audience? Council? Your Honor, I have a motion to amend the resolution. To amend the resolution. Uh, amending fees for the Burlington Dankwork Pool for a sponsored free day at Dankwork Park to be $600 with conditions. Second. Yes. Your, your Honor, the, re, uh, the reason uh, I'm presenting this is because it was in my packet, but also the reason I was, I'm presenting this is that based on the information, the additional information that we received from uh, the um, uh, city manager uh, about the uh, uh, arrangements that we have with the uh, gentlemen's club. This tends to be more in line with uh, what we uh, have a, a history of doing. Am I reading that right? Well, it, we charge with the, with we the charge six hundred dollars. They 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 pay for the first two hundred uh, children that come through, and that's supposed to be the ages four to. 
14, yeah, 4 to 15. It probably goes up to 18. Probably you probably carry school, it up yeah. and change the rules a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, anything, anyone over the, those first 200 are free. Uh, we still charge for the adults that come on those days. Their av the average revenues on the, that are received in admissions on those days is eight twenty, eight hundred twenty-five dollars. It's so the eight hundred was really comparable with what the fees were that were raised on those those days. But all the kids were free. So there's parts parts of what both were was what was being said both from staff and from the gentleman's club last time. So basically, I, I'm in favor of the gentleman's club model. I, I, Six hundred dollars is fine with me, but only for kids. And I think we should limit. To, that was the goal to help out the kids, and so charging the adults seems like a reasonable thing, like the gentleman's club does, for instance. I, th I think that's a good model to work from. You still accomplish your goal. You get the kids in there for free. Uh, Adults cover their own, and and we cover our costs. That, that, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. It does me too. You want to? Uh, can we? Uh, well, we have an amendment on the floor, so we have to take care yeah, of that first. Yeah, we'll vote on that one, and then you can always make a second amendment. Okay. Ready? Okay. Yeah, well, the, there's a problem with that, though, because I can't vote in favor of that six hundred dollars if we. The other amendment doesn't pass, so th that's my we'll take your chance. contention. <laughs> take, take your chance. Roll the dice. Well, we don't. We got. We don't have any other option unless she withdraws her second. Yeah. We redo the amendment. Okay, go for it. Let's roll it. We're Give going it. for it. Give it a shot. Okay, this is on the six hundred dollars. Scott. No. Wilson. Aye. Davidson. Uh, no. Fleming? No. McCampbell? Aye. Your Honor, I'd like to offer an amendment to the resolution amending the Dankwart Park, uh, Dankwart Park pool fees uh, for a free day at Dankwart Park to be $600 with conditions, an additional condition that uh, this only be, this uh, free day only be available to youth um, or is that the would that be a right way to say it? 18 and, 18 so yeah, and under. 18 18 under. under. Yeah, 18 under. So that would be under. item three, that then it would be changed. Yeah. Amend, to amend item three to say admission to the pool shall be open to uh, all youth 18 and under. Your second Second. Okay. Mm. It's still open to others, but they have to pay. Correct. Right. I don't know. I, I <laughs> sorry. 600, I guess it, it sounds like you're making an amendment that the only them, can, they only folks under 18 can attend. For but free. For free. Can you get wording that makes that? Well, I thought on number three, it, it did say at the end. Does it? I'm Open sorry. to all youth, 18 and under, free of charge. Free of charge, that's on, what it says. On a free day. Okay. Is that right? Okay, yeah. That works for me. Not better than my verbiage. Well, it's the same, same thing. Yeah. Got to cover it. So, included in this amendment is the $600 and 18 and under. That's what we suggest. It says on a free day, the mission to the pool shall be open to all youth 18 and under free of free charge. charge. Is that what? I like that. Let's vote it out. Okay, to be clear now. Okay, and did I have a second on that? Yeah, you, did okay. say, you did say $600 as part of your amendment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay, ready? Yes. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. <clears throat> Thank you, Council. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is the time Thank that you. we. Thank uh, you, man. We'll uh, entertain uh, comments uh, from the audience. Dino. Hello. I'll, I'll, I'll speak with you. I'll speak with you. Please give us your name. Uh, address, basic, my name is Dean K. Fennessy. Uh, um, um, my middle name is K-E-L-V-E-R Fennessy. Now, I got three things. Uh, 
I know you're not talking about it tonight, but the, about the about the riverfront. Uh, you you have that when the guy was here. They spent all that money on it. I, I agree about raising the wall for it, but I still have concern about when you do that. Where the railroad depot, they spent a lot of money building that up. That's going to be flooded big time in big monies. And I know we can't do nothing about big monies, but uh, you, what's going to happen is you're going to put another flood, you know, wall over there to protect that area. But that's what I'm concerned. But okay, I went to Dangwood Park. It's a beautiful park. I saw a lot of traffic, like, they have those guns there. People were five or six cars. I still think that you want to spend all this money on the riverfront. Why can't we get any money for Cascade Bridge? Because that would be easier for people to get to that park than go all the way around to the, to the park. Now, I, I know that you didn't have the money in the past because of a bunch of problems, but I still think it would be nice if we could get that, maybe make it half of dirt and half a bridge. I don't know. I'm, don't take me lately. I'm not an engineer. Uh, basically, it would be nice if we did something to renovate that I to get that done because I think it would be nice for people to go back and forth in that park. Okay, uh, I'm never going to the streets. I got a photograph memory uh, where the rounder is and the drug clinic. There's that bridge. I talked to him once, and it's you said what it's over 60 years old. That, that bridge, you know, goes past those buildings on Pleasant Street. Well, you have the treatment center where the old school is, yeah, the right. Rauner, yeah, and Mount that. Street. Mount Pleasant Street Bridge. Yeah, uh-huh. And, and I think you told me that's about over 50 years old. I, anyway, I could have got it wrong. But we got the in the future about maybe replacing that bridge because I think you or somebody told me that a bridge, usually over 60 years, their lifespan, you need to replace it. That bridge is on the agenda. No, it is Pleasant on the Street agenda. Good. Yeah. Uh, there was something else I can't remember off and I lost my thought. But uh, those were the two main <laughs> things that I was that I was concerned. I just lost it. <laughs> but anyway, those are two main things that I think that we should go toward the future. I think you all do a good job. I'm not here that often, but uh, keep up the good work. And may the Lord lead you, Lord Jesus Christ, give you wisdom and guidance, and peace be with you. But I can't remember what else I was going to say. Oh, I now remember. Uh, the school over here that it's abandoned, that used to be a high school, Apollo. Apollo. Who's in charge of that? Is it you people or is it the school council? It's us. It's, it's the city. Okay, I heard that that plan for that went, psh, it fall through. The plan to turn that into apartments, is that still going or is that just we had one, out? We had one developer who had presented a plan on that who uh, at this point was not interested in moving forward. A couple of the pieces he needed to make that work were not going to be possible. However, we do have another developer who has expressed an interest in a similar uh, idea of rehabbing a portion of that structure. The council will be considering that here. I think the next council meeting will have what the next action step that they would would have in line in order to to look at. Well, doing that. my opinion is this: that's been near vacant ever since the '70s. Either we're going to get this done and get somebody in there, or I went there. I went to school there, and I know you you were. We hate to see old buildings tear down. It was the early 80s, yeah. though, Dean. But hope, hate to see them torn down. But the problem is, what you just, you're going to amend that update the fire code. The problem is, a lot of these old buildings, when they were made, 
Udini and handicap accessible, water sprinklers, fire alarms, smoke detectors, and you don't know if it has a festus in it. What I'm saying is basically sometimes it's more expensive to rebuild an old building, update it, than to put a new one. Like I said, either get somebody in there that has the money like maybe Donald Trump, ha ha ha, <laughs> like Donald Trump, to get the money to go in there, to be willing to put the money into it, or just basically tear it down. Because I, I know probably people are going to, and they see it's going to get mad at me about this, but you can't save every old building in the town. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Peace be with you. Go Cubs. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, go no, Cubs. no, don't take that. Third goal season has happened. Why would you even open that door? Hey, you, you know what? Forgetting is the first sign of old age. Just want to throw that out there. Is anybody else for the audience that has any comments or concerns before we close her up? All right, we've satisfied Dean, Mike, and yeah, Mark. Hi, All right. Uh, Mr. Tislin. Mm -hmm. Kathleen. Councilwoman Wilson. I have nothing, thank you. Councilman Scott. I'm good. I have nothing. Oh, oh, I did want to thank uh, Miss Larger or Larger. I can't remember what your last name is. I don't know how to Larger. pronounce that. What's that? Larger. Larger. Uh, she uh, won the uh, contest of the blood drive uh, for the city of Burlington. So uh, good job. Way to give blood. Um, blood suckers out there, you know, but uh, we, we've got to have that. So fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Uh, that's all I had. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. If you haven't been out to the golf course recently, you should go out to Flint Hills Municipal Golf Course and play golf. We had a great time on Saturday with the Gentleman's Club golf outing, and uh, the course is in great shape. <clears throat> and uh, there's a lot of birdies out there to be had. You wish. And we've got the bishop Birds. back. <laughs> bishop, any words? Uh, no, I just got back from a trip. Happy to be home, and I have nothing right, further to say at this time. But you reserve the right. City manager. I did want to let you know we did receive a letter of resignation today uh, from uh, Ryan Thornburg. Uh, he's been with the city for eight and a half years, and uh, he's looking to move on to be the county engineer in Van Buren County. Uh, so we'll, we'll be in the process of looking to fill that position here over the next couple of months. Um, mentioned the Mount Pleasant Street Bridge overpass. Uh, we do have funding in this next cycle. Uh, the state's cycle begins October 1. Uh, so once we get past there, we can, we're in a spot where we can start to incur costs that, are, uh, that count towards that project. Uh, we're going through a, we're doing a request for proposals for engineering services. Or have those gone out yet? So, and, but they have not gotten back yet. Uh, so we're probably, we're, we're looking in, hopefully in September to be able to get you a, a, a contract for services. It may not be till October. Uh, but that'll get to the point where we're able to start doing design work. Uh, last I knew, design work on a bridge is a good 10 month process or somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, so if we do get to where we can get construction going, that would be a late summer project next year, possibly into 2018 is more realistic for when you should expect to see that occur. Um, we do care about big muddies, uh, as you mentioned stuff, but as we went through design work, uh, we were looking at what was available for funding from the state. Uh, the night we were very successful and very fortunate to get the $26.2 million of funding from the state for this. Uh, we could not do any of the flood wall work without uh, that assistance, but to provide full protection, I think we we're in a $35 million range. Uh, and I don't even know if that got all, all the way up to the marina, but it was, we were looking to try to get at least past Big Muddies uh, and all the way down to the sewer plant. Uh, we do provide protection within this design work for the depot itself. It's going to rely on a, some permanent berm, but also some uh, HESCO barrier type protection for a portion of that. Uh, even getting that work done doesn't uh, get completed until I think that 2023, uh, the work's going to be done on this flood protection work over uh, four separate uh, projects uh, every other year construction work going on with that. So we are trying to make sure that we cover it. And I hear what you're saying on the Cascade Bridge. 
Uh, it would be nice to be able to use that funding there, but the state wasn't willing to give us for give us money uh, to do yeah, Cascade that's Bridge. What you're saying that so, uh, however, the council does look at that as one of their primary goals. Uh, it's one of the top goals that they had in this last goal setting session. And if, if they can find a way to make the financing work on that, I think that they are on board with you on making that happen. Yes. Yes, that would be nice. Kind, kind of, sort of. Hey, uh, before we go, I, I forgot one thing. I do want to say uh, thank you for doing the radio show. Mm -hmm. uh, also want to thank Tim Scott again for buying every blue bulb in the state of Iowa. I, I just got to throw that out there. He has just been, uh, he's been everywhere. So uh, half the blue lights that you see in Burlington are probably because of this guy or probably more higher than that. Uh, but before we do close out, Chief, you, the, police, the fire department won an award. Would you, do you want to? Uh, yes. Dang, I forgot. To I'm sorry about that. I, I, I didn't make a note for myself and I'm getting old too, just like Dean. I forget stuff. Yeah, we won the uh, Iowa Donor Network Legacy Award, and I don't remember what legacy. Something legacy to do with with an we got the award for education, so it was really neat. The, the uh, spokesperson for the Iowa Donor Network in our area came down and gave us an award, and she kind of went back in history. She had stats of how many referrals that we have made as a fire department. She went back to 2014, we made zero referrals to the Donor Network. 2015, we made eight, and we were already up to eight for this year, so. That's what we made as a fire department. Now, a lot of other, a lot of referrals. So, when you have somebody that could be an organ donor, other people can make referrals besides the fire department. A lot of times, it's the hospital staff or mm -hmm. a medical. This is the examiner. first time. This is the first time that a fire department has won that award too. I think I remember I, her saying. Yeah, I know she said well, they only give two awards a year. One was to a hospital, and one was non-hospital, which we were. That's the work we got. So, it was pretty neat. It was pretty special for the guys, and we've had her come down and do training. On all three shifts, the last well, some of it was somebody different last year, but so it's a good feeling, you know, when you have a, something maybe not a good outcome of a an ambulance call yeah. to know that at least you know they made a difference in somebody else's life. And when she comes and talks about all the things, one person, even if you think yeah, you know definitely. this person's not going to be a donor for whatever reason, oh, there's things that they can use. So yeah, it's it's pretty neat. Thank you. Yep. No, I that's that, that, that's. I, I was very proud of the department and when, when uh, she gave her, uh, gave her talk and explained that she had said definitely we were the only non-hospital related uh, entity to receive one of those awards. And there's, there's, there's two in each category. And there, wasn't there five categories? Right. There's the, right. Yeah, I'm not sure what yeah. the other ones were. Ours was in education, though. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was the, I see the blue light in the southwest corner of the fire department uh, supporting yeah. the police department and, and I know that's yeah. that uh, I, I felt right here when I saw it so appreciate that thank you thank you thank Chief. you Chief. appreciate thank you. it all right in March you are tall in my book my friend <laughs> just throwing that out there council honor I move that we adjourn second I pretty good at this. Scott Bye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. I want to go back.